Diogenes Lyardi Ooze Diogenes Lyardi Ooze Slash Dionys Lairis Slash Diogenes Lairis Greek Delta Iota Omicron Gamma Nu Eta Sigma Lambda Alpha Rho Tau Iota Omicron Sigma Translit Diogenes Lartios FL 3rd century AD was a biographer of the Greek philosophers Nothing is definitively known about his life but his surviving lives and opinions of eminent philosophers is a principal source for the history of ancient Greek philosophy His reputation is controversial among scholars because he often repeats information from his sources without critically evaluating it he also frequently focuses on trivial or insignificant details of his subjects' lives while ignoring important details of their philosophical teachings and he sometimes fails to distinguish between earlier and later teachings of specific philosophical schools. However, unlike many other ancient secondary sources, Diogenes Laertius generally reports philosophical teachings without attempting to reinterpret or expand on them which means his accounts are often closer to the primary sources. That due to the loss of so many of the primary sources on which Diogenes relied, his work has become the foremost surviving source on the history of Greek philosophy. Life Laertius must have lived after Sextus Empiricus, circa 200, whom he mentions, and before Stephanus of Byzantium and Sopater of Apamea, circa 500, who quote him. His work makes no mention of Neoplatonism, even though it is addressed to a woman who was an enthusiastic Platonist. Hence he is assumed to have flourished in the first half of the 3rd century, during the reign of Alexander Severus, 222-235, and his successors. The precise form of his name is uncertain. The ancient manuscripts invariably refer to Alayardius Diogenes, and this form of the name is repeated by Sopater and the Suda. The modern form Diogenes Laertius is much rarer, used by Stephanus of Byzantium, and in a lemma to the Greek anthology. He is also referred to as Laertes or simply Diogenes. The origin of the name Laertius is also uncertain. Stephanus of Byzantium refers to him as Delta Iota Omicron Gamma Nu Eta Sigma Lambda Alpha Epsilon Rho Tau Iota Epsilon Sigma, Diogenes Holartus, implying that he was the native of some town, perhaps the Larte in Caria or another Larte in Cilicia. Another suggestion is that one of his ancestors had for a patron a member of the Roman family of the Lardii. The prevailing modern theory is that Laertius is a nickname, derived from the Homeric epithet Diogenes Lartiade, used in addressing Odysseus, used to distinguish him from the many other people called Diogenes in the ancient world. His hometown is unknown, at best uncertain, even according to a hypothesis that Laertius refers to his origin. A disputed passage in his writings has been used to suggest that it was Nicaea in Bithynia. It has been suggested that Diogenes was an Epicurean or a Pyrrhonist. He passionately defends Epicurus in Book 10, which is of high quality and contains three long letters attributed to Epicurus explaining Epicurean doctrines. He is impartial to all schools, in the manner of the Pyrrhonists, and he carries the succession of Pyrrhonism further than that of the other schools. At one point, he even seems to refer to the Pyrrhonists as our school. Dot on the other hand, most of these points can be explained by the way he uncritically copies from his sources. It is by no means certain that he adhered to any school, and he is usually more attentive to biographical details. In addition to the lives, Diogenes was the author of a work in verse on famous men, in various meters, which he called Epigrammata or Pametros, Pi Mu Mu Epsilon Tau Rho Omicron Sigma. Writings the work by which he is known, Lives and Opinions of Eminent Philosophers, was written in Greek and professes to give an account of the lives and sayings of the Greek philosophers. Diogenes divides his subjects into two schools which he describes as the Ionian slash Ionic and the Italian slash Italic, the division is somewhat dubious and appears to be drawn from the lost doxography of Socian. The biographies of the Ionian school begin with an Aximander and end with Cletomachus, Theophrastus and Chrysippus, the Italian begins with Pythagoras and ends with Epicurus. The Socratic school, with its various branches, is classed with the Ionic, while the Eleatics and Pyrrhonists are treated under the Italic. Dot. Legacy and Assessment Henricus Aristippus, the Archdeacon of Catania, produced a Latin translation of Diogenes Laertius's book in southern Italy in the late 1150s, which has since been lost or destroyed. Jeremia de Montagnone used this translation as a source for his Compedium Moralium Notabilium, 1285, 
and an anonymous Italian author used it as a source for work entitled Liber de Vita et Morbus Philosophorum, written circa 1317 to 1320, which reached international popularity in the late Middle Ages. The monk Ambrogio Traversari, 1386 to 1439, produced another Latin translation in Florence between 1424 and 1433, for which far better records have survived. The Italian Renaissance scholar, painter, philosopher, and architect Leon Battista Alberti, 1404-1472, borrowed from Traversari's translation of the lives and opinions of eminent philosophers in Book II of his Libri della Familia and modeled his own autobiography on Diogenes Laertius's Life of Thales. Diogenes Laertius's work has had a complicated reception in modern times. The value of his lives and opinions of eminent philosophers as an insight into the private lives of the Greek sages led the French Renaissance philosopher Michel de Montaigne, 1533-1592, to exclaim that he wished that, instead of one Laertius, there had been a dozen. Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, 1770-1831, criticized Diogenes Laertius for his lack of philosophical talent and categorized his work as nothing more than a compilation of previous writers' opinions. Nonetheless, he admitted that Diogenes Laertius's compilation was an important one given the information that it contained. Hermann Usner, 1834-1905, deplored Diogenes Laertius as a complete ass, Asinus Germanus, in his Epicuria, 1887. Werner Jaeger, 1888 to 1961, damned him as that great ignoramus. In the late 20th and early 21st centuries, however, scholars have managed to partially redeem Diogenes Laertius's reputation as a writer by reading his book in a Hellenistic literary context. Nonetheless, modern scholars treat Diogenes's testimonia with caution, especially when he fails to cite his sources. Herbert S. Long warns, Diogenes has acquired an importance out of all proportion to his merits because the loss of many primary sources and of the earlier secondary compilations has accidentally left him the chief continuous source for the history of Greek philosophy. Robert M. Strozier offers a somewhat more positive assessment of Diogenes Laertius's reliability, noting that many other ancient writers attempt to reinterpret and expand on the philosophical teachings they describe something which Diogenes Laertius rarely does. Strozier concludes, Diogenes Laertius is, when he does not conflate hundreds of years of distinctions, reliable simply because he is a less competent thinker than those on whom he writes, is less liable to reformulate statements and arguments, and especially in the case of Epicurus, less liable to interfere with the texts he quotes. He does, however, simplify. Despite his importance to the history of Western philosophy and the controversy surrounding him, according to John Mario Cow, Diogenes Laertius has still not received adequate scholarly attention. Both modern critical editions of his book, by H. S. Long, 1964, and by M. Markovich, 1999, have received extensive criticism from scholars. He is criticized primarily for being overly concerned with superficial details of the philosopher's lives and lacking the intellectual capacity to explore their actual philosophical works with any penetration. However, according to statements of the 14th-century monk Walter Burley in his De Vita et Morbus Philosophorum, the text of Diogenes seems to have been much fuller than that which we now possess. Additions and Translations Notes Additions and